everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to be looking at Unit 4, which is Social Psychology and Personality. But today we're going to be specifically looking at 4.1 Attribution Theory and Person Perception. This is Part 3. There were three CED questions for this section of Unit 4, so I broke them into the three videos to make it easier for you guys to understand. So hopefully that's been helpful. Let me know. I've been getting some great comments, which I really love to hear, and I love to answer them back again. So, And if, and if you've already subscribed to my channel, Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Love seeing the numbers going up. And if you haven't, hit that subscribe button for me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's get started. So these are the key terms for unit 4.1. So all three parts of the CED questions. So this is going to be all on a separate video with your definitions and real life examples to make it easier for you to make your flashcards and for you to prepare for the either the AP exam or a unit test. So the third CED question that the College Board put into this unit is explain how person perception applies to behavior and mental processes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to break it down for you, all the essential knowledge you need to know to be able to answer this question so that you can apply it on test day for your unit test or for your AP exam. So let's start off by talking about person perception. This is a fascinating concept in psychology because it explains how we form impressions and judgments about others and also about ourselves. So understanding this helps us to see why we think and act the way we do in social situations. Let's start off with the, def the definition because that's always a really good place to start, right? Person perception refers to how we form impressions and make judgments about people. This includes how we evaluate others and how we see ourselves. These perceptions don't just stay in our heads. They influence our behavior and mental processes in very powerful ways. So let's look at a key question about this. How do repeated exposure, beliefs, and social comparisons shape our thoughts and actions? Let's break it down. Let's start with repeated exposure. The more we interact with someone, the more likely we are to form an impression, either good or bad. For example, if you see someone helping others frequently, you might perceive them as kind. And now we go to beliefs. Our existing beliefs or biases often influence how we interpret other people's actions. So for example, if you believe someone is hardworking, you might excuse their mistakes as temporary. The last one is social comparisons. We compare ourselves to others to understand our own abilities and traits, which can affect our self-esteem and motivation. So for example, seeing a friend excel might motivate you or it might make you feel inadequate, depending on your perception. So why is person, per person perception important? Well, first of all, it explains behavior. It helps us understand why people be behave the way they do. So for example, if someone seems withdrawn, you might interpret it as shyness or disinterest, which will affect how you interact with them. The second one would be self-concept. The way we perceive ourselves is shaped by how others perceive us and how we compare ourselves to them. So for example, if others compliment your skills, you're more likely to feel confident. And the last one is social interactions. Perceptions influence how we interact with others, whether we approach them with trust, avoid them due to mistrust, or collaborate based on mutual understanding. Here's the takeaway from this. Person perception plays a key role in shaping both our relationships and our sense of self. So by being aware of how repeated exposure, beliefs, and comparisons influence our judgments, we can approach social interactions with more empathy and understanding. So the next time you meet someone new, or even you reflect on yourself, ask yourself this, what's shaping my perception here? Is it fair? Is it accurate? Because understanding person perception doesn't just help us in psychology class, but it also helps us navigate in social in the social world. Uh, social, sorry, it helps us navigate socially in the world every day. So, do you have any questions about person perception? Put those in the comments. So now let's move on to the mere exposure effect. So the mere exposure effect is really another fascinating phenomenon in psychology because it explains how simply being exposed to something repeatedly can change how we feel about it. So let's look again at the definition first. The mere exposure effect is the tendency for people to develop preference for things they are repeatedly exposed to over time. So in simpler terms, the more often you see or hear something, the more likely likely you are to like it, or even if you didn't care for it at first, you will get actually accustomed to it, it just by being exposed to it. So here's some examples of the mere exposure effect. So imagine you hear a new song on the radio. At first you feel kind of indifferent. Maybe you may not even like it. Maybe you dislike it actually a little bit at first. But after hearing it a few more times, then all of a sudden you find yourself humming along to the song. And eventually you realize, oh, I actually like this song. That's the mere exposure effect in action. 
The repeated exposure made the song feel familiar and therefore more appealing. So how does this impact our behavior and mental processes? Well, it does matter because the mere exposure effect can influence several things in our lives. So for example, familiarity and positive association. The more we encounter something, the more comfortable and positive we feel about it. This is why advertisements use repetition. They want their products to feel familiar and appeal to you. So this happens frequently in our lives, right? We see the same commercials, the same jingles, the same songs, because they want to expose these things to you and get you familiar with them. And hopefully in that familiarity, you become that you like it better. Preferences in relationships, for example, is another one. Repeated interaction with someone can increase liking, even if there wasn't a strong connection at first. Think about a classmate or a coworker you didn't really know at well, at first, you know, and then they kind of grew on you over time because you kind of just started seeing them regularly. You got to know them better. You started talking to them more. That increased, that exposure to them increased your familiarity of them. Influence on ideas and trends. The effect can also shape our preferences for ideas or cultural trends. For example, seeing a particular style or concept repeatedly can make you like more acceptable, accepted of it, or it may appeal to you more. Why is this important? Okay, understanding the mere exposure effect helps us recognize how repetition influences our preferences and decisions. It explains why we might choose certain products, people, or ideas over others. It also highlights how familiarity plays a big role in shaping what we like and how we feel. So the next time you find yourself liking something you didn't care for initially, ask yourself, have I been exposed to this so many times that now it's starting to grow on me? The mere exposure effect is a simple but powerful reminder that repetition has a huge influence on our thoughts, our feelings, and behaviors. Now let's move on to self-fulfilling prophecy. This is a concept in psychology that is about how our beliefs and expectations can actually shape reality by influencing behavior, our own and others. Here's our definition. A self-fulfilling prophecy happens when a person's beliefs or expectations about someone lead them to behave in ways that cause those expectations to come true. So in other words, what you expect to happen can influence actions and outcomes making your expectations a reality. So let's look at some examples of this. Imagine a teacher expects a particular student to excel in class. Because of this belief, the teacher might provide more encouragement, offer more opportunities for the student to participate, or give more positive feedback. The student who's feeling supported works harder and ends up achieving higher and better results. This confirms that the teacher's belief that the student would perform well, even though the teacher's actions played a role in creating that outcome. Here's the impact on behavior and mental processes. So sh it shapes your interpersonal interactions. The way we treat people based on our expectations can influence their actions. Positive expectations can motivate someone to succeed, while negative expectations might discourage them or lower their performance. It reinforces stereotypes and expectations as well. Self-fulfilling prophecies can unintentionally reinforce stereotypes, both positive and negative. For example, if someone believes a certain group is untrustworthy, they might act distant or defensive. And this could lead to members of that group being sort of respond to similarly, reinforcing this original stereotype. So why is this all important? Understanding self-fulfilling prophecy helps us recognize how our beliefs and behaviors influence others. It's a reminder to be mindful of our expectations, especially in roles like teaching, parenting, or leadership. It challenges stereotypes and gives people the opportunity to prove themselves. So the next time you find yourself expecting something from someone, ask yourself, am I behaving in a way that might make my expectations come true? Self-fulfilling prophecies show us the power of beliefs and interactions in shaping our outcomes. And by being aware of this, we can encourage positive behavior and challenge unfair assumptions. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the concept of social comparison. It's a psychological process we all engage in. It explains how we evaluate ourselves by looking at others and what that means for our own behavior and mental health. Let's look at the definition. So social comparison is the process of evaluating yourself by comparing your abilities, achievements, or situations to those of other people. This can help us understand where we stand and motivate us, but it can also affect our self-esteem and emotions in both positive and negative ways. So let's look at the different types of social comparison. There are two main types of social comparison, upward comparison and downward comparison. Let's start with upward comparison. This happens 
Uh, this happens when you compare yourself to someone you see as better in some other way. So for example, imagine you admire a peer and who's more successful, like a classmate who gets excellent grades or a co coworker who gets a promotion. What's the impact? Upward comparison can be motivating. It can inspire you to work harder to achieve the similar success. However, it can also make you feel inadequate or discouraged if you focus too much on what you're lacking. Then we're going to look at downward comparison. This is when you compare yourself to someone you see as worse off than you. So for example, you might feel fortunate when you notice someone facing more challenges, like a friend struggling financially while you're more stable. This is the impact. Downward comparison can boost your own self-esteem by helping you feel better about your situation, but on the flip side, it can lead to complacency, making you less motivated to improve because you already feel like you're better off. What's the impact on our behavior and mental process? Is. Okay, let's look at this. Social comparison influences how we think and act. Our motivation and improvement, for example. Upward comparison can inspire self-improvement, but it's important to avoid, avoid excessive negative self-judgment. Self-esteem and contentment. Downward comparison can enhance self-esteem by helping you appreciate your own circumstances, but it shouldn't make you complacent or dismissive to others' struggles. Okay, so by recognizing these effects, we can use social comparison more constructively, and this is why it's important. Understanding social comparison can help us reflect on how we perceive others and ourselves. It reminds us to, one, use upward comparisons for inspiration rather than self-criticism. Appreciate what we have through downward comparisons without losing sight of our own goals. So the next time you find yourself comparing, to, comparing yourself to someone, ask yourself this, am I using this comparison to grow or am I using it and it's holding me back? Social comparison is a natural part of life and learning to manage it can make a big difference in how we see ourselves and our own potential. Okay, so now let's look at relative deprivation. Relative deprivation is a psychological concept that explains why people sometimes feel dissatisfied or unhappy, even when their situation hasn't changed. It's all about how we compare ourselves to others and the impact those comparisons have on our emotions and behavior. Okay, first of all, we're gonna look at the definition as always. Relative deprivation is the feeling of being deprived or disadvantaged when you compare yourself to others who seem better off. So what's key here is that it's not about your actual situation. It's about how you perceive your situation relative to someone else's. Okay, let's look at some examples. Imagine you feel content with your job, but then you find out that a friend who has a similar role is earning a higher salary. Well, suddenly you start to feel dissatisfied, even though nothing's changed about your job. This feeling of being deprived because of the comparison is relative deprivation in action. Okay, so now look at, let's look at how this impacts our behavior and mental processes. We're going to start off with our emotions. Relative deprivation can lead to feelings like resentment, envy, frustration. It can create a sense of unfairness or injustice, even if your circumstances haven't changed at all. It can also affect our motivation. In some cases, it can be motivating. It can push people to work harder or strive for better outcomes. However, often it leads to dissatisfaction and a decline in your mental well-being. And lastly, it affects our mental well-being because repeated feelings of relative deprivation can, con can contribute to stress, anxiety, and even depression, particularly if these comparisons feel overwhelming or out of reach. Okay, let's look at why all of this is important. Understanding relative depression is very important because it shows how powerful comparisons can be in shaping our emotions and our behavior. So it reminds us that our perceptions, not just our realities, play a big role in how satisfied we feel. So recognizing when we're falling into this mindset can help us focus on gratitude, personal growth, rather than unhealthy comparisons. So the next time you catch yourself feeling unhappy after comparing yourself to someone when you need to ask yourself, is this actually about my situation or am I letting comparisons distort my view? And by being aware of this relative deprivation, we can challenge those feelings and focus on what is truly important in our lives. Okay, let's look at how the, we apply person perception in real life. So for example, in relationships, repeated interaction fosters liking, mere exposure effect. In education, teacher expectations shape student performances, self-fulfilling prophecy. And in the workplace, social comparison influences career satisfaction and motivation. And lastly, mental 
health, relative deprivation can affect emotional well-being and life satisfaction. So let's recap what we've learned about person perception. Person perception explains how we interpret and respond to others and ourselves. Here are the key concepts we've looked at in 4.1. Mere exposure effect builds familiarity. Self-fulfilling prophecy reinforces beliefs through behavior. Social comparison and relative deprivation shape self-concept and emotions. And recognizing these effects can improve relationships, reduce biases, and promote positive self-perception. So that's all the essential knowledge you need to know for 4.1 attribution theory and person perception. We looked at that CD question, explain how person perception applies to behavior and mental processes. We went through all of the steps that you needed to know to prepare you for your unit test or your final exam. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, hit that subscribe button for me. Thank you. And the like button if you can also. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I always answer everybody. I love hearing from you guys and I love the suggestions that you guys give me sometimes and I can make the videos better for you. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.